Number 1. A 17-year-old married client is scheduled for surgery. The nurse taking care of the client realizes that consent has not been signed after preoperative medications were given. What should the nurse do? A. Call the surgeon. B. Ask the spouse to sign the consent. C. Obtain a consent from the client as soon as possible. D. Get a verbal consent from the parents of the client. Number 2. The nurse is caring to a client who just gave birth to a healthy baby boy. The nurse may not disclose confidential information when, a, the nurse discusses the condition of the client in a clinical conference with other nurses. b. The client asks the nurse to discuss the her condition with the family. c. The father of a woman who just delivered a baby is on the phone to find out the sex of the baby. d. A researcher from an institutionally approved research study reviews the medical record of a patient. Number 3. A staff nurse has had a serious issue with her colleague. In this situation, it is best to a. discuss this with the supervisor. b. not discuss the issue with anyone. It will probably resolve itself. c. Try to discuss with the colleague about the issue and resolve it when both are calmer. d. Tell other members of the network what the team member did. Number 4. While in the hospital lobby, the RN overhears the three staff discussing the health condition of her client. What would be the appropriate nursing action for the RN to take? A. Tell them it is not appropriate to discuss the condition of the client. B. Ignore them, because it is their right to discuss anything they want to. C. Join in the conversation, giving them supportive input about the case of the client. D. Report this incident to the nursing supervisor. Number 5. A hospitalized client with severe necrotizing ulcer of the lower leg is scheduled for an amputation. The client tells the nurse that he will not sign the consent form and he does not want any surgery or treatment because of religious beliefs about reincarnation. What is the role of the RN? A. Call a family meeting. B. Discuss the religious beliefs with the physician. C. Encourage the client to have the surgery. D. Inform the client of other options. Number 6. The hospitalized client with a chronic cough is scheduled for bronchoscopy. The nurse is tasked to bring the informed consent document into the client's room for a signature. The client asks the nurse for details of the procedure and demands an explanation why the process of informed consent is necessary. The nurse responds that informed consent means, a. The patient releases the, the, patient releases the physician from all responsibility for the procedure. b. The immediate family may make decision against the patient's will. c. The physician must give the client or surrogates enough information to make healthcare judgments consistent with their values and goals. D. The patient agrees to a procedure ordered by the physician even if the client does not understand what the outcome will be. Number 7. A mother in labor told the nurse that she was expecting that her baby has no chance to survive and expects that the baby will be born dead. The mother accepts the fate of the baby and informs the nurse that when the baby is born and requires resuscitation, the mother refuses any treatment to her baby and expresses hostility toward the nurse while the pediatric team is taking care of the baby. The nurse is legally obligated to a. Notify the pediatric team that the mother has refused resuscitation and any treatment for the baby and take the baby to the mother. 
b. Get a court order making the baby a ward of the court. c. Record the statement of the mother, notify the pediatric team, and observe carefully for signs of impaired bonding and neglect as a reasonable suspicion of child abuse. d. Do nothing except record the mother's statement in the medical record. Number 8. Which is true about informed consent? A. A nurse may accept responsibility signing a consent form if the client is unable. B. Obtaining consent is not the responsibility of the physician. C. A physician will not subject himself to liability if he withholds any facts that are necessary to form the basis of an intelligent consent. D. If the nurse witnesses a consent for surgery, the nurse is, in effect, indicating that the signature is that of the purported person and that the person's condition is as indicated at the time of signing. Number 9. A nurse caring to a client with Alzheimer's disease overheard a family member say to the client, if you pee one more time, I won't give you any more food and drinks. What initial action is best for the nurse to take? A. Take no action because it is the family member saying that to the client. B. Talk to the family member and explain that what she slash he has said is not appropriate for the client. C. Give the family member the number for an elder abuse hotline. D. Document what the family member has said. Number 10. A 15-year-old girl just gave birth to a baby boy who needs emergency surgery. The nurse prepared the consent form and it should be signed by A. The physician. B. The registered nurse caring for the client. C. The 15-year-old mother of the baby boy. D. The mother of the girl. Number 11. A 12-year-old client is admitted to the hospital. The physician ordered Dilantin to the client. In administering 4-phenytoin, Dilantin, to a child, the nurse would be most correct in mixing it with, a, normal saline. b. Heparinized normal saline. c. 5% dextrose in water. d. Lactated ringer solution. Number 12. The nurse is caring to a client who is hypotensive. Following a large hematemesis, how should the nurse position the client? A. Feet and legs elevated 20 degrees, trunk horizontal, head on small pillow. B. Low fowlers with knees hatched at 30 degrees. C. Supine with the head turned to the left. D. Bed sloped at a 45-degree angle with the head lowest and the legs highest. Number 13. The client is brought to the emergency department after a serious accident. What would be the initial nursing action of the nurse to the client? A. Assess the level of consciousness and circulation. B. Check respirations, circulation, neurological response. C. Align the spine, check pupils, check for hemorrhage. D. Check respiration, stabilize spine, check circulation. Number 14. A nurse is assigned to care to a client with Parkinson's disease. What interventions are important if the nurse wants to improve nutrition and promote effective swallowing of the client? A. Eat solid food. B. Give liquids with meals. C. Feed the client. D. Sit in an upright position to eat. Number 15. 
Number 15. During tracheal suctioning, the nurse should implement safety measures. Which of the following should the nurse implement? A. Limit suction pressure to 150 to 180 millimeters of mercury. B. Suction for 15 to 20 seconds. C. Wear eye goggles. D. Remove the inner cannula. Number 16. The nurse is conducting a discharge instruction to a client diagnosed with diabetes. What sign of hypoglycemia should be taught to a client? A. Warm, flushed skin. B. Hunger and thirst. C. Increase urinary output. D. Palpitation and weakness. Number 17. A client admitted to the hospital and diagnosed with Addison's disease. What would be the appropriate nursing action to the client? A. Administering insulin replacement therapy. B. Providing a low-sodium diet. C. Restricting fluids to 1,500 milliliters per day. D. Reducing physical and emotional stress. Number 18. The nurse is to perform tracheal suctioning. During tracheal suction. Number 18. The nurse is to perform tracheal suctioning. During tracheal suctioning, which nursing action is essential to prevent hypoxemia? A. Auscultating the lungs to determine the baseline data to assess the effectiveness of suctioning. B. Removing oral and nasal secretions. C. Encouraging the patient to deep breathe and cough to facilitate removal of upper airway secretions. D. Administering 100% oxygen to reduce the effects of airway obstruction during suctioning. Number 19. An infant is admitted and diagnosed with pneumonia and suspicious-looking red marks on the swollen face resembling a handprint. The nurse does further assessment to the client. How would the nurse document the finding? A. Facial edema with ecchymosis and handprint mark, crackles and wheezes. B. Facial edema with red marks, crackles in the lung. C. Facial edema with ecchymosis that looks like a handprint. D. Red bruise mark and ecchymosis on face. Number 20. On the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. A 50-year-old man, diaphoretic and complaining of severe chest pain radiating to his jaw. D. A mother with a 5-year-old boy who says her son has been complaining of nausea and vomited once since noon.